welcome you back for a fresh episode of Business Beyond the Game. I'm your host, Eric Jackson, and I'm pleased to have this guy on this week's segment, someone who hails from the great state of Michigan and who's represented our fine nation on what might be the biggest stage in sports. We have four-time Olympic medalist and former competitive swimmer, Peter Vanderke. Peter Eric, K, thanks for having me. Show, man. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. It's great to be here. Absolutely, man. Now, Peter, you were a member of the U.S. Olympic teams, 04, 08, 2012. You competed alongside Michael Phelps, Ryan Lochte, and others. You even picked up a couple gold medals along the way. How would you say your experience as traveling the world, being a competitive swimmer, has translated into your life today as a family man and a principal at the real estate firm Signature Associates? Yeah. So, you know, it's funny. I, uh, in my business, I'm in commercial real estate brokerage and, um, you know, as a 1099 employee, employee doing transactional work, um, it's a lot like sports. It's what you put in is what you get out. So everything I learned either directly or indirectly in the sport of swimming kind of translates to uh, what I do on a day-to-day -day basis now. Um, and, and everything else in my life, you mentioned family and all that stuff too. So, um, it's good. It's uh, I'm very thankful for the lessons I learned. Yeah, no, definitely. How transferable are those skills, right, that you learned as an Olympian into your role now in real estate? Is is it apples and oranges or, you know, what's that like? It, it's different work, but I, it's certainly the same uh, ideas. So, you know, things like goal setting, accountability, um, not cutting corners. You know, you do that stuff in sports, you're not going to end up uh, – you know, winning a whole lot generally, <laughs> and it's the same thing in life, right? If, if, if you're trying to be the best and, and, uh, you know, do things the right way, you have to, to follow the same mindset, uh, principles. So, um, yeah, it's, it's translated for me, thankfully. No, that's great. You always had an eye for real estate, even when you were competing or how, when did that sort of come about? No, I've been doing this for about 10 years now, but, um, you know, it's funny, I was actually a general bio major in school and thought I want to go the medical route. And as I got closer to graduating, I was like, you know, I really don't love this mm. as much as I thought I would. But somebody kind of was taking me in a different direction. And, and um, you know, once I was done swimming, I, I had the opportunity to work in real estate. And it was always something I had an affinity for, but it wasn't anything anybody in my family did or mm -hmm. anything I studied particular uh, in particular. So, um it's funny how life works out that way, but uh, I really like what I'm doing, and and uh, yeah, it's been a great experience so far. Yeah, you you know, Peter, I I talked to other former athletes, and a lot of them are happy with their lives now, right? But they also say there's nothing like running out of that tunnel on Sundays or hitting that game winning shot at home, right? Like, so my question to you is, I guess, do you ever miss it, Peter? You know, taking your block or hearing the horn sound or. Absolutely. And I think it will probably be that way for the rest of my life. And it's funny you mention that because I, I know a lot of friends and teammates and, and people in different sports that, that have that same experience. It's like, you know, up here, it's like I can still do it. But, uh, <laughs> you know, sports is not something you can physically do forever. So I, I think I remember reading an interview. I think it was with Michael Jordan. He's like, I still think I can play. Yeah. You know, <laughs> I still think I can guy. dominate. But and, yeah. and th there's no substitute for you know, the, the physicality of sports, you don't get that in the workplace. It's, it's obviously very different, but, um, you know, it's, it's just one of those things you got to find a way to, to take those skills and translate them to something else if you're going to do something else. And that's, that's what I've been able to do. And it's, you know, it's a great experience, um, you know, take, taking that, all those lessons and, and putting them into something else. Right. And do you think the longevity of a swimmer, you know, how does that compare to, you know, we've seen Tom Brady play at 40 and, LeBron is still in his run, you know, how possible do you think that is? Um, in the pool? Yeah. So I, I, you know, I think in swimming, you can get to that age too and still be competitive, especially if you take care of yourself and, you know, the science behind uh, recovery and nutrition and, and all that has changed. It's, it's still changing, right? It's right. so much better than it was, you know, 20, 30, 40 years ago that you're seeing people uh, able to play later uh, but in swimming, it's, you know, it's not like playing in the NFL or NBA. You, the money's just not there. So for me, even though I, I did pretty well, you know, by the time I was 28, it was like, well, if I'm going to go another four years, I'll be 32. And then starting my life over, you know, right, it's like right. at some point I kind of had to hedge and get into something else. 
Now you're, uh, you just mentioned the money. And as we know, a lot of Olympic athletes aren't necessarily paid handsomely, you know, in their sports. What do you just think of this new wave of Olympic athletes who are using like their, their strong social media presence to supplement their journeys? You know, some people have managed to earn endorsements and other partnerships, you know, that way. Yeah. You know, it's, it's a, uh, it's a great tool if, if you're willing to do it and, and, it's certainly not easy, right? It, everyone right. thinks it's, uh, you know, I'm just going to make a quick video to do it right. I think it takes a lot of time and effort and planning. And um, I was, it was never my forte to, to, to do that stuff, but uh, I give credit to, to people that can make it happen. And it, it's interesting because fans have a closer look at, you know, what's it like to, to be in someone else's shoes that's going through that. So, uh, there's never been a, a greater time to share that information and kind of bring people along on your journey. Yeah, I was just going to say, you think that's the difference between maybe Olympians today versus 10 years ago when it seems like maybe more exposure, right? You're saying from a, a media standpoint. Yeah, it's just a lot easier to, to follow uh, as a fan, I think. I mean, there's so yeah. much more content out there. Um, so it's uh, there was a fair amount when I was still swimming, but it seems like even way more now. I mean, if you want to, uh, you know, follow, follow somebody that you're interested in the sport. Uh, th there's plenty of opportunity for that. Right. Instagram, everything else, et cetera. You know, Peter, you've had, you know, really great experiences and, you know, pretty knowledgeable of the sport. You know, if you could replace IOC president Thomas Bach for a day, what would be your first rule change or implementation that? Oh, that's a tough question. Um, you know, I, as an athlete, I would try and pick something that's athlete centric. I mean, yeah. when you're talking about those issues, you're talk, usually talking about sponsorship, uh, regulation and doping. And, um, you know, I was a proponent of, of athletes being able to use their, you know, name image likeness that you're seeing in the NC2A now. Um, you can't completely use that uh, to your own benefit in the Olympics. And so I'd like to figure out a way to do that. Um, but it's, it's complicated. It's a big system that would need an overhaul. So I don't think you could do it in a day. Yeah, no, that's a really good point, right? Cause if you're personally sponsored by a brand, but that's a competing against the IOC sponsor, right? Yeah. That crash right. of, I think we're still navigating that part of the whole NIL Olympic landscape. Yeah. Um, you know, speaking of Olympics, we're less than 200 days from the Paris Olympics. The swimming program scheduled for Paris will occur in two segments similar to the 2012 games in London, which you're very familiar of, you know, morning prelims, final sessions at night, NBC, given their investment, has plenty of influence on the schedule as they look to maximize TV ratings. How much do you think just scheduling, Peter, can impact the summer's performance in your eyes? Well, it definitely makes an impact. I mean, and, and the, the, the schedule of the events changes it for, for certain people that do multiple events, but, um, I think the, the one thing that's just been kind of uh, consistent through the years is is you, you make it to Team USA, you just roll with the punches, right? It's the same for everybody. Mm -hmm. You can't dictate the schedule. It's just yeah. something that's handed to you and you got to make it work. So I think the mindset of a lot of the athletes on the team is, you know, it's just tell me when I got to be there and I'll show yeah. up and do my best. It, it you is know? what it is, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Because the business part is so necessary, right? Yet, you know, you got to manage that as an athlete too, right? Um, right. Totally. Are you still following the U.S. Olympic teams? And is there someone we should keep an eye on, you would say? Yeah, yeah. So, there, I mean, there, I think there's going to be some some new names on the team this year. I, I don't want to speculate too much. But I'm also really interested to see how some of the veterans do. I mean, someone like Katie Ledecky, who's been there multiple times, uh, Caleb Dressel, who, you know, has, has traditionally been one of the stars of Team USA, took some time off. He's going to be coming back and trying to make the team, and it'll be interesting to see how he does. And uh, so I think we'll have a good mix of veteran leadership and, and hopefully some some new, exciting young names and faces that can go out there and, and make us proud. Yeah, some young guns, some young guns. Um, you know, you hung it up yourself, Peter, as one of the most decorated student athletes in the history of the University of Michigan. You later went down to Gainesville, Florida to join the Gator Sum Club, where you were coached by legendary head man Greg Troy. How interested have you been in just in returning to the sport as a coach or an advisor in some capacity? You know, it's something that 
I've thought about with my day to day and, and family commitments right now. It's not something I could do, unfortunately. Um, I've always had in the back of my mind, you know, if I, you know, down the road retire and have some free time or, or even not necessarily be retired, but have more time to give back. I, I'd love to do something like coach a high school team or just, just part-time coach because I love the sport and I, I think it's such a great sport and, and giving back is important to me. Um, I just can't seem to carve out enough time to, to do it where it would be meaningful right now. Um, but, it, you know, as a fan, it, it, it'd be fun to, to see that side of it and get into coaching a little bit. A lot of the coaching I've done has been more – one-off type of clinics and, mm. you know, nothing over the course of a season. So uh, that would be, I'm sure, an adjustment for me. I mean, it, just because you could do the sport doesn't necessarily mean you can coach it. So mm. um, I, I'd have some learning to do as well. But uh, <laughs> I, I do love the sport and, and uh, love staying involved. No, that's great for sure. And you're still, you're still involved. You're not too far away. You and your family supporting the Detroit Swims Initiative, which is a really cool cause. And, um, but here, Peter, as we wind down a little bit towards the end here, I just want to ask you, what kind of a lesson you would say you've learned as an Olympian that just translates like really well, you think, in the business community? I think earlier before you mentioned sort of team building, right, and, um, you know, goal setting. Yeah, so I, I think that's the, the biggest thing is how, one, how to overcome adversity, right, no matter what job you're in or, or line of work or anything in your life, um, you know, it may seem easy to somebody on the outside, but as we all know, there's challenges to, to everything we do. And um, certainly sports teaches you rejection, how to lose. And I think sometimes how to learning how to lose is more important than winning mm. uh, because not everybody wins everything they do every time, right? Even the best of the best uh, get rejected. They lose. They have to figure out how to you know, pick themselves up, come back, do better, try harder, work harder, and and kind of rectify that situation. So, um, I, I think that's the the biggest thing is is knowing how to to take a loss and use that as motivation to to make yourself better and, and try and win. No, I love that. That's a resiliency goes a long way, even as in the business world. Well, there you have it, folks. From the man himself, Peter Vanderke, four-time Olympic medalist. Pete, thank you so much for coming on, man. My pleasure, Eric. Thank you. And thank you all for watching Business Beyond the Game. Please tune in next week. Mm -hmm.